Good evening, I'm Brent Stafford, and this is Shaky Politics. Let's get shaking. Welcome to Shaky Politics. Today, another episode of The Duel. The Duel is a political column in 24 Hours Vancouver newspaper. 24 Hours Vancouver is the number one free daily in Metro Vancouver, chosen by over 650,000 readers a week for its one-stop resource for news, entertainment, weather, and outstanding local content. Every Monday in The Duel, I battle over the issues of the day with fellow columnist Lila Yule, and each week you get to vote on who won. So pick up a copy of 24, read each duel, and cast your vote at vancouver.24hours.ca slash opinion. This week's topic for the duel, should the Senate be elected or abolished? Before we begin, readers have asked an important question. What does the Senate do? The Senate plays a constitutionally vital role in the passing of legislation. The government introduces a new law into the House of Commons, and once passed, that law is brought to the upper house, the Senate, for consideration. The Senate reviews the bill, makes amendments if desired, and then, as in most cases, passes the bill. The Senate does have an absolute veto power to defeat any bill, therefore preventing it from becoming law. However, since senators are appointed by the Prime Minister for life and are not elected, they lack the legitimate authority from the electorate to defeat a bill already passed by government. That said, it's happened. The Senate outright defeated a strict anti-abortion bill passed by the Mulroney government in 1989. The defeat resulted in abortion no longer being a crime in Canada, and it's now treated like any other medical procedure. This is just one example of how the Senate has played a pivotal role in the lives of Canadians. And now to the duo. I wrote first this week and Lila responded. I argued the Senate should be reinvigorated through the power of elections, and Lila believes it's time to cut the cord on a bloated upper house. Quoting from her column, Brent has done an excellent job this week of deflecting attention away from the deeper issues behind our nation's dysfunctional Senate. He defends a solution, electing senators, that is as rife with the possibility of constitutional challenges as simply tossing the Senate. In doing so, Brent sidesteps the fact that if Prime Minister Stephen Harper were truly interested in an elected Senate, as he once claimed, he wouldn't have gone on to appoint more of his cronies to plumb positions living well on the public's dime. It's appalling that the Senate has become nothing more than a bloated carcass, a shameful remnant of what its original purpose and function was intended to be. Please read Lila's entire column on vancouver.24hours.ca. Just click the link below in the video description. Now for my argument. In the wake of the Senate expense scandal, the federal NDP has turned up the heat. Party leader Thomas Mulcair promised to make the abolition of the Senate a key priority in the party's next election campaign. What we've watched for many years is people talk about reform when they're in opposition and do nothing when they're in power. That's what Stephen Harper was all about. Talked a good game on Senate reform when he was in opposition, did nothing once he was in power. In our obligation to tell Canadians that when an NDP government is elected in 2015, we will indeed follow through on our undertaking to abolish the Senate. The party launched a populist website replete with statistics and analysis of the costs of the Senate. However, they are hiding a truth behind the numbers, which makes their promise of abolition spurious at best and reaffirms my belief that any suggestion of abolition is just politicking. The only real, viable path to fix the Senate mess is through elections. The NDP says the cost of the upper house is $92.5 million a year, and its plan to abolish the Senate will save taxpayers money. What the NDP is not telling you is senators' salaries, allowances and benefits only make up 36% of the cost of the Senate. Slightly more of the cost, 38%, goes to the salaries and benefits of unionized government employees. Taxpayers pay $35.5 million a year for the 450 union employees who keep the Senate running. I find it highly implausible the NDP will downsize these government jobs, don't you? The NDP won't save this money. They admit it. The NDP states that they will just find better ways to spend it. They will reallocate Senate spending to other priorities. And what about the other costs? Well, abolishing the Senate would also most likely take a constitutional amendment, and this would be no easy path. 
Patrick Smith, a political science professor at Simon Fraser University, shared with me a great analogy that opening up the Canadian Constitution is like fixing a warped floorboard. You start at one end, and by the time you reach the other, it's pulled up all of the floorboards around it. If we open up the Constitution, fierce horse trading would most likely result. The last time we attempted a constitutional amendment was with the Charlottetown Accord, and it cost $369 million in today's dollars. We just can't afford it. The Harper government has it right with the Senate Reform Act, Bill C-7. The bill outlines a plausible and cost-effective plan to reinvigorate the Senate through elections without a constitutional amendment. New senators will be elected by the people in each province and limited to a nine-year term, with all senators already appointed by the Prime Minister migrated to the new term limit. Elections will legitimize the Senate's already existing absolute veto power over government legislation, resulting in a popular assembly empowered by the people to provide effective checks and balances to the ruling majority government of the day. I'm Brent Stafford, this is Shaky Politics, and you have just been shaken.